Thursday, June 6th, quick one up video for you wonderful ladies and gentlemen. Bit of a consolidation day ahead of the jobs report. We do have a topping tail at the high end of our range, which always has me a little bit worried for a potential secure high and look above and fail levels, but we'll discuss that in a minute. As far as VIX goes, I'm on guard here for a potential inverted head and shoulders. I think if we got over high of day here at 1298, that could be problematic. Anything below there, I think, is just sideways consolidation. And of course, if we lose 1254, we could revisit down into the 11s. I don't think those levels will be sustainable, but it is possible we do get there because volatility tends to drain after a big bad event, unless the big bad event becomes worse than expected. Obviously, we're going to get the jobs report number tomorrow at 8.30 a.m., I think if it's worse than expected, it would not necessarily trigger the market because the ADP number was worse than expected and it was able to rally with lower interest rates. But if it's really much worse than expected, that could trigger traders to be a little bit worried. So we're sort of looking for a Goldilocks number, maybe a little bit disappointing, but not really terribly disappointing. As far as TLT goes, we are riding channel high here. I think if there is a pop still further, it could go up to 94.62 and fill in the 328 gap. If we were to lose low of day at 92.86, I think we revisit the 100 MA and the zero line at 92.42 as defined by the 516 high. If that fails, we likely come back down to 92.01 to 92.06, basically the 200 MA, and then we'll see. If that area fails, I think the market could have more problems down to 91.60 and maybe even a revisit of 91.05. As far as the dollar goes, I think it's all bearish consolidation unless we can get back up over at least the 200 MA at 104.2 and 10452. That zone now should be resistance. It was support. If it can clear, then I think the bulls have more problems. Anything below there, I think is sideways consolidation with lower prices in play. As far as the ES and NQ go, we are still consolidating above range highs. If we were to get to channel high tomorrow, that would be 5394. If we have weakness and price starts accepting below 53.49 and low of day 53.45 quarter, then I think we could retest the 53.33 half level, which would repair a rich close. And if that were to break, I think we could potentially come all the way back down to repair the rich close from two days ago at 52.88 half. In between levels, of course, are 53.33 half, the 200 MA 30 minute at 53.22.54 and rising, lower end of the breakout range at 53.08 half. Cues are a similar setup. If it goes up to channel high tomorrow, depending on how you draw the channel, that could be 19,410 quarter to 19,431 quarter. If we start breaking below 18,980 half, it's really a hop, skip, and a jump to repair the prior day's rich close at 18,927.75. After that, there's key support at 18,819 half, which will line up with the 200 MA 30 minute by the time it would get there. And then we have 18,691 quarter, and then the rich close from three sessions ago at 18,634 half. As far as SPY goes, we do have a dragonfly doji at the top end of a range here. And I think you could keep it super simple. If we have a lower high tomorrow, particularly in the regular trading hour session, be on guard for a break below the 523 reference high, 533.07, and then today's low of day at 532.68. If that does take place, I think there's a quick liquidation break to at least the 10 MA at 528.68, the 20 MA at 527.56, and then potentially a retest of the breakout at 524.61 to 525.72. If we can stay above 533.07 and consolidate, the next big up target is 543.61, which is the 1.618 of the 328 high down to the 419 low. As far as the cues go, we do have a topping tail near the range high. We have a little bit more room to channel high at 456.44 and rising. By the time it got there, it would likely be 456.82. Anything that can hold 460.58, I think is still fine. I don't necessarily know that we're going to come down straight to channel low, but let's say you're doing some type of a put spread as a hedge. You could probably target the 445 zone as your lower strike. If you were to buy something like 460, sell 445. $15 wide to me makes sense if you want to go longer dated to take advantage of this low volatility. NVIDIA had a pretty nasty reversal today. It was able to hold the 191s at the end of the day. If we have a lower high tomorrow and then some kind of a break of the 1183.20, 
reference low, I think we come back down to 1158.19 and likely a test back to the 10MA at 1134. That's probably a right or right out by the dip spot, particularly if it happens early on some type of a liquidation break caused by the jobs report. I do think people are going to be excited for the split on Monday. But if we do have an up open on Monday, it's probably an opportunity to book some profits into. And if we are even up tomorrow, you might want to use that opportunity, particularly a pump into the close to trim some gains there and at the very least raise stops. ASML acting super well, back up to the 1056.34.37 reference high. Good area to trim some profits into. Low of day is a good raise stop at 1032.99. Looks like Roaring Kitty is gonna have his way with the shorts again. Close today, pretty strong, 46.55 and up another 20 something bucks in the after hours, 61.20. He might get a pump up to 100 bucks, who knows, before this is all over. Amazing that he's going to catch these guys all over again. Kind of love it there. And by the way, if they ban him from E-Trade, I would absolutely be down to join that boycott. I'm not an E-Trade client, but I would publicly condemn the company for blocking retail traders in that fashion. I think the benefits by that would go to obviously Robinhood, which is already seeing some rallying. I think anytime the mean stocks and cryptocurrency are in play, that stock gets good earnings coming and probably Schwab. So those would be the plays if they do wind up banning Roaring Kitty. And I can't even believe I'm saying Roaring Kitty in a video. Apple, I warned, was a good opportunity to book some gains at 196.38. We are seeing a little bit of pullback here. If we did come back down to 192.01, I'd probably do the time warp again and buy some kind of a call spread. I do think that there is some opportunity for a run up still into the Worldwide Developer Conference, but a lot of that has already happened. And I think a lot of the selling we saw today in NVIDIA and Apple and some of these stronger stocks were because people are working from home on Thursdays and taking Fridays off and going out to the Hamptons. And they were like, okay, we're up pretty big already. Let's book those gains before the weekend and just hightail it out of town. And I would expect that going forward for the rest of the summer to see some weakness if we have strong weeks, maybe Thursday into Friday. So something new to consider. Tesla looks like it's setting up here. I'm sort of close to pulling the trigger on a call spread, playing for a move up to 200. But I do need to see it clear and hold the 100 MA, currently 180.52 and falling. And they seem to be lowering the hurdle every day lately. But the stock really hasn't broken down. We have earnings coming up, but the last earnings were okay. So I would imagine the stock isn't in any imminent danger, probably more market risk than anything here. We already saw some nasty headlines out of China with BYD sort of eating their lunch, but the stock hasn't really flinched since. It seems like there's gonna be some kind of antitrust move on Google and Microsoft and all those. It just seems like a money grab. I think the US regulators were like, why are the Europeans having all the fun shaking the pockets of these big tech companies? So it seems like that could happen here. I think that could even change if there's a flip of administrations, but shorter term, it is problematic. I do think you could use low of day on Microsoft 420.58 as a stop. That would take you below the 20 MA. If we keep on moving up, 430.82-ish has been the range high. Google consolidating nicely. Anything over the 426 high of 174.71, I think is okay. If you want to raise your stop to low of day, 175 makes sense to me. There was some reference resistance here at the two times range as defined by the 129 high down to the 35 low. That being of course 176.90. The 2.618 of the range is up at 191.18. I think if they're mentioned in the Apple event as one of their AI partners, because it seems like OpenAI has a deal, but maybe Google does as well, there could be a move up to the channel high at 184.26, but I would use that opportunity to book some gains, particularly if we don't have that antitrust ruling out in that time. As far as Bitcoin goes, nice little consolidation here. I think you could raise your stop to 71,105 at the very max 70,515. If we were able to clear 72,265, I think there could be a run back up to the 74,415. It seems to me like crypto is consolidating here in a little bit of a bull flag, and it would need some kind of exogenous event, I think, for risk off to dump it lower. Gold back up over the 20 MA. I do think there is a little bit of a trim here at 22011. I think if you're long, you could raise your stop to 218.55, which is the 20 MA. If we were to get back below low of day at 218.10, I think there is probably a quick short to at least the 10 MA at 216.76 and maybe the 50 MA at 216.33. But this is negating a bearish pattern here. And I do think that if there is some consolidation that remains over those 218s, it's sideways to higher. Generally speaking, tomorrow, we are going to have that 8.30 a.m. number. 
We go up on it. I think it's a good opportunity to lock in some gains, particularly at the high end of range. If we go down on it, look to see if we can hold those breakout levels we discussed previously. If not, there could be a further liquidation break ahead of the weekend. On big up weeks, there tends to be some selling and locking in of gains on Fridays, and maybe we're starting to see that being front-run a little bit on Thursday. That's it.